All right, so good morning. I wanted to go live a lot earlier than now, but um, I couldn't, so here I am. Um, I wanted to kind of, really honestly, I want to purge um, this movie out of my system. I spent a lot of days being very angry <laughs> about it. Um, so I finally watched it and watching it actually helped me put in into context why I was so annoyed from the beginning about it. All right. Um, when you peace mama rule, I, um, I want to get this shit out of my system. I just, I want to let it go. I want to stop being, I don't want to, um, I want to bring out why I'm so annoyed i guess um by the movie number one you know it's gonna make a whole lot of money and it's gonna make a a, a whole lot of money um for people who don't they don't i don't think they deserve a claim for the for, for what they put together and i feel fucked up saying that a little bit because i do feel like you know the people who made the production you know, were mostly black women, right? And they were, you know, they did their best. They tried their best. Um, but the underlying thing, the underlying thread in it is that they participated in perpetuating what I what I call time loop spells. I don't know, um I don't know if that if that framing exists somewhere else. But a couple of years ago, I I was it was something else I was annoyed about. It might have been Twelve Years a Slave. When did that come out? Okay, let me get to what I'm what I'm referring to when I say time loop spells. Okay, white supremacy has its own occult magic. Okay, it has its own occult magic that helps it maintain its illusion of power. And one of those things, in my summation, is time loop spells. All right, time loop spells rely, they rely on glamour, glamour work, glamour magic, making what is very nasty and gross and disgusting seem beautiful and appealing and important, right? Um, re-traumatization. So you have to be constantly re-traumatized um, in order for this illusion to continue to exist. Chronic denial, um, there's no such thing as white supremacy. What is that? What is that? What is that? Chronic denial. So it's it's like we're not even going to attempt to see this as a possibility. We're just going to deny it and deny it and deny it until it goes away. All right. Um, and also legislation. So they have to pass these quote unquote laws on onto paper that says, you know, what is allowed and what isn't allowed. OK, Um so let me start with the re-traumatization, okay? Um, the re-traumatization and glamour in Hollywood and film, it goes hand in hand, all right? Um, re-traumatization and glamour, you see it happens usually, most of the slave movies that come out in America come out in November and December. Good morning, Lana. Sometimes they come out in August, but most of them, if you go do your research, you'll see a lot of the slave movies that get released, major motion picture releases are coming out in November and December. Um, this is what I call the emotional harvest season. This is Thanksgiving. This is Christmas going right into the new year, right? Right into the Gregorian calendar new year. This is the season where they harvest emotions. Um, and I'm, I'm still, I'm specifically talking about occult magic of white supremacy, how they keep the illusion in power. All right. And it's a whole bunch of different moving parts to it, but time loop spells is one of the major ones because it has so many other components to it. Okay. Glory came out December 14th, 1989. Amistad, December 10th, 1997. Lincoln, November 9th, 2012. Django Unchanged, December 25th, 2012. 12 Years a Slave, November 8th, 2013. And Harriet, November 1st, 2019. These are like really big films. And if you go look at it, it's even more than that. A lot of them are out around this time of the year, leading right into Thanksgiving, 
right into Christmas, right before their new year. Um, they're harvesting the emotions so that we can, once you're, when you, when you deal with trauma, what are some of the ways you cope with it, right? We cope with trauma through eating, right? Through food. We cope with trauma through sex. We cope with trauma through spending money, retail therapy, right? Um, so right around now, all the losses that they had from systems, right? Big companies, the big Fortune 500s, the, the billionaires, the trillionaires, the, from January to say August, September, right before the, um, fourth quarter starts, they have to, they have to make up for whatever losses they had for that time period. So I believe, um, from my own, you know, observation, insights, intuition, I believe that they intentionally re-traumatize especially black people because of the spending power we have in this country. We have to help them make up for the losses right around Thanksgiving and Christmas time, right? Um, Thanksgiving time for enslaved people was one of the few times that they had to kind of um, settle down, breathe a little bit, spend time with their family. You could go visit the other plantations and commune with your wife or your husband or your children if they got sold off around town, hopefully, not across, you know, across uh, county lines or across state lines. Hopefully you could visit your people on other plantations to celebrate Thanksgiving, to celebrate Christmas. White folks was a little bit happier around that time too. So it was a lot more mellow. So fast forward to now, it's no different. It's the exact same thing. That is the time loop. That's the loop of time that we're constantly being spun around on and brought right back to the same place all over again. Um... Okay, so talking about the movie Harriet. Oh, let me go back to this time loop spells. Okay, so the glamour, the glamour part, they have to siphon off your energy, okay? Um, they're tricking you. They're giving you a visual of something that is going to inspire you, something that's going to make you feel connected to your slave past, right? Something that's going to make you feel connected to your you know, your experience as a black American, they're going to give you some slave shit to help you, you know, to give you, give you that feeling again. And when you get that feeling again, it's not nothing positive. You watch these movies, you don't leave feeling, I mean, you might feel inspired, um, but there's a, a part, there's a, our blood remembers. Let me just, our blood remembers and our water remembers. We remember everything. Even if it's not in our conscious mind, we have the same blood running through us the same water running through us as our great mother's past. The very first mother, we're carrying her blood and our water in us. Okay? Um, that's the science of it. Um, so when they give us these images again, when, when we're seeing these images, we are being, on a cellular level, brought right back to that, that space. Peace, y'all. Peace, Rashonda. Um, peace, Kiara. So it's like when, so that's how, excuse me, ooh, fix that. Ka'aro, mommy, that's how the, um, the glamour works. They have to siphon off our energy. Re-traumatization happens via reenactments. That's why the slave movies come back around, around harvest time, around emotional harvest time. Chronic denial legislation. Okay, coming right back. So Tajala, one of my, Wonderful, luxurious, beautiful historian sisters brought to my attention that um, Cynthia Arrivo either has not yet or will not answer which Igbo subtribe she's from. Okay. Um, and Taj presented information that if she's from the Dialia tribe or subtribe, she's from a family that descends from a Nigerian slave trading lineage. Okay. This is what, when I, and I, and I'm not, dis, I'm not, I'm not offering any type of discriminations. I'm not make, this is, I'm talking from a scientific level. Her blood remembers just like our blood remembers. So if I left the movie, I personally, and another sister Satori Christina helped me put into words the emotions I felt when I was, um, when the movie was over with, cause the whole first half, I'm, I'm looking at it like this. I'm watching it with a, with my face scrunched up because 
the whole time her face is like she looked like she looked so afraid and confused and that's if you look at pictures of Harriet Tubman from when she was young up until she was old in that rocking chair with them blankets on her, her face looks like fuck you. She, her whole demeanor is fuck you. And mind you, she's two generations from West Africa. Her people weren't in America for very long. Our beloved ancestors, they were not Americans for very long. They, her, her blood, she, her, her, she was still strong in her shit. Right. She hadn't been deconditioned out of that, which is, when you think of a woman who would resign herself to make multiple trips back to the South. This is not a woman who looks confused about some shit. This is a woman who looks like, fuck you. I'm determined. And then when you think about how when she was a young girl, the that that cracker bashed her over the head. Right. And opened up her skull. Right. Think about the type of like, you know attitude she had to be giving him for him to bust her upside the head like that i just don't think that she was a confused weak person and that's the energy i got from the first you know two-thirds three-fourths of the of the film so you know i um that was the first thing that that had me looking at the at, at the film real grossed out right the second thing was the whole supporting cast, all of the actors supporting um, Cynthia Erivo carried the film. Um, her acting in the film, to me, was mediocre at best. She could sing her ass off. So the singing and the ludes were kind of, you know, it was like, oh, okay, she's singing right here. I'm sorry I left you. I can't sing a lick. I'm sorry I left you. She's singing to her husband. She's singing to her mama, telling her she about, I'm running away, I'm leaving. And they start singing back, and that's how they know she about to run away. And then when she comes back, her husband's back is turned. She's singing at him, so that's how he knows she back. It's just, it was just, it's like, I was just really thrown off that we had to, that we had to, we, it was black women who put this shit together, that we would do that. It just, it really threw me for a loop. I'm trying not to be emotional during this shit, but it's really hard. Um... That is the glamour part, the energy siphoning, the re-traumatization. Um, the narrative the movie expresses around her disability as it is described to me is also ableist. Absolutely. She said, um, she said that the, she, when they, she said, when it opened up my head, when I, when my head got open and made God's voice clearer to me or louder to me, it was almost like it was a, she took, the trauma as a blessing. She took the trauma as a gift. She was a seer before it happened. She been a seer. She was a seer her whole entire life, right? This is what we know. Those of us who know the history of Harriet Tubman, we know the story. We know she was a prophet from the day she was born. She could see things. She knew things. And so they put that in there and made God's voice louder to me. I don't know if she actually said that. I, I got to look that up, but the way they framed it, it was almost like the bless, there was blessing in the trauma. The whole movie was there's blessing in the trauma. That's the whole message that I got from the shit. Um, time loop spells, legislation. Okay. Okay, I'm coming. Sunny doo doo. So, legislation. Byron Allen is suing Comcast for $22 million, I think it is. A whole lot of money he's suing Comcast for. It. So, but he's suing them for racial discrimination because they won't carry his productions. He's suing them using the Civil Rights Act of 1866. All right. I'll share the article under this live when I finish it. He's suing them for $22 million, use, citing the Civil Rights Act of 1866 as um, to support his claim that he's being discriminated against based on race. And he deserves the same opportunities as white producers, white production, white owned production companies. And that Comcast is not giving him the opportunities because he's a black man. So these motherfuckers at Comcast are about to go to the Supreme Court. They're going to the Supreme Court right now to get the, the Civil Rights Act of 1866 overturned. <laughs> so time loop spells use legislation as well. And this is this is integrating the glamour and re-traumatization aspects with the legislation at the same time. So it's almost Hi. like because, yes, baby. 
I'm about to take care of you right now. Give me just a minute. Okay, baby. Okay. He doodle every time I go live, y'all. So, um, the Civil Rights Act of 1866 overturned the 1857 Dred Scott ruling that black Americans, whether free or slave, were not citizens. Or black people in the United States, whether they were free or enslaved, were not citizens. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, what the overturning of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 would do would... It would make it harder for um, black people to sue citing racial discrimination against white owned companies. All right. So that's my my take on the occult magic of white supremacy, specifically this as this wing of it called time loop spells. All right. So glamour, re-traumatization, chronic denial and legislation. All right. Um, words that described how I felt after watching the movie. Cheated. I felt cheated. I felt like I didn't get the full spectrum, full access to Mama Harriet's power. I didn't get to see it at all. Not, not really. A little bit. It was bits and pieces when she would black out and start talking to God in her way and all that. It was cool, but I just didn't get the full. I didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't. Cynthia Revo did not bring it. She didn't bring it like she could have brought it or should have brought it or would have brought it. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I felt deflated. Um, I didn't go into it inflated. I went into it actually. I I, I, I knew that I, well, I went into it knowing I was going to hate it. Um, And after I watched it, I, it was confirmed and I hated it more. Um, I felt uninspired. I was very annoyed by the, um, mm -hmm. why you got my pendulum? What? What? It was the, just, it was the singing. I know that singing was one of the ways that we communicated with one another. We were not allowed to drum anymore. We couldn't play our instruments anymore, so we sang. Okay. I know that singing was a huge part of our um of our process but that's it just it really took it out of me erica said and the sad part is most people will watch the trash movie and think it is factual i hope that we i hope that we know now at least we know by now that um hollywood takes creative license and they constantly change they uh, there's not a movie with historical accuracies that exists in hollywood most movies produced by um produced by Hollywood have spins on them. Um Mama Ru says Cynthia has nothing to tap into to fully realize the spirit of spirit of Mother Harriet. No, she doesn't. She has no frame of reference for that. As a as a woman who looks down on um Black people who are the descendants of enslaved Africans. Um, she can't access that. There's no way for her to access that because her spirit is already shut off from that reality. Um, so I also felt annoyed. Um, I was deeply annoyed by the historical inaccuracies. That black man that they threw in the movie for all of maybe five total minutes, seven total minutes, um, who was Harriet, Harriet's bounty hunter. Um, he, if, they, if he wasn't in the film at all, it would be the exact same movie. Um, there was a lot of aspects of propaganda in the movie, and I think I felt like he was just thrown in there to, um, you know, perpetuate the... Um, to perpetuate that that uh that idea. I didn't like that at all. I felt like my face was being played in a little bit, like they was playing in my face. Um I I didn't overall I just I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. Lana said the singing part is part of what is throwing me off. The story is way too heavy for the interruption of singing just because. It wasn't just because. They add, they put it in there at points where 
it actually went in there. But it was the story was too heavy for it to just be in there. And I don't know, like maybe maybe if they had put if 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 it was cast better, I might feel a little bit differently. Um Sanchada, get down. Get down. Get down. I don't want you to fall. All right? Um Yeah, I just I wasn't I wasn't digging it. I do encourage everybody to go watch it. Yeah, agendas everywhere. Agendas everywhere. It was laced heavily with poison. Um, laced heavy with poison, all in the name of a time loop spell. Um, so I hope y'all understand when you're being confronted with a time loop spell. Most of us, um, yeah, most of us. Most of us are still victims of time loop spells. It's usually um, abusers, victimizers, people who people who need your energy in order to survive. People who need your energy in order to um, continue on with whatever it is that they have planned to do. They're going to attempt to re-traumatize you. They're going to attempt to glamour you. They're going to gaslight the fuck out of you, which is the chronic denial. And they will attempt to pass legislation to, um, <laughs> they'll attempt, they will work really hard to uh, pass legislation in order to continue on with whatever it is that they're doing to siphon off your energy. And they're going to be using reenactments on a regular basis. You can always expect them around Thanksgiving time. Right before Thanksgiving, you will be re-traumatized via reenactments. And you will be glamorized via reenactments. Um, be careful how you give it your energy. Don't go into it and get re-traumatized. Go into it with the idea of knowing that you are being re-traumatized for the purpose of uh, relying on your coping mechanisms, okay, via food, um, via spending money, however you cope with your trauma, that's how you're being, that they're relying on that, um, this was a, why I'm here for a wife's response to Watchmen, yep, hi, Tasha, Sunny, what you doing? All right, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, y'all, take care. Peace.